right. Good to see everybody. You know, Mike, you're gearing up to play uh, this weekend, but uh, have you thought about the fact that you may be going against your old boss and sometime next season? And, uh, oh. No, I haven't, no. <laughs> I actually didn't even know what you're talking about as you're asking the question. <laughs> Mike, can you just talk about Roquan's leadership and what you feel like he's done to kind of lift up the rest of the defense, the rest of the players around him? Uh, tough to find a place to start. Um, I mean, he's he's the guy we look to. You know, when when we need something to be said, he he knows what to say and when. I think I think you know what's unique about him is what shows up on the field is backed up all the talk. Um, when you play the style of football that he plays, you know, it's contagious and the guys see it and it pops off off the screen. Uh, when you talk about expectations and playing like a Raven, you know, that that's what it is. So um, you don't need to explain it. You just show it and uh, the guys understand it. So when you prepare for the opponent, Mike, I presume you, as you start with the quarterback, you look at the list of things he does well and try to take that away. <laughs> as you prepare for Patrick Mahomes, where do you begin? Well, it's a long list uh, of the stuff that he does well. Um, it's a great question. You know, I, if, if we had the answer, um, if people, the answer was out there, you know, he probably wouldn't be in this game, you know, so, uh, or have the consistent success that he's had. So uh, hats off to them and, and the type of player he's an ultimate competitor. Uh, so, you know, we have our hands full. It's a great challenge. Um, you know, there, there's things situationally, obviously, that you feel like that we do well, that you're going to want to be able to, you know, exploit you know, given those certain situations, uh, but you're right. It's it's a it's a lengthy list for sure of all the, of the things that he does really well. Mike, talking to um, players yesterday, they did say that it does benefit them when they face a guy like Mahomes that they have to face a guy like Lamar mm. every day in practice. Um, is there anything to that? I mean, in your eyes, does it help your defense that they've seen Lamar every day since you know OTAs and minicamp? Uh, you know, it, probably. You know, I mean, just one. Just when you're when you're thinking about training camp and, and you know you're great and you're and you're scoring practice and you know practices get competitive and uh, you know the, the cadence of the play becomes a little bit longer when he's able to hold the ball and sometimes we think it's a sack but it's really you know Harb says it's not and play it out. Yeah, of course. I mean, those are those are things that you have to that you have to be able to adjust to and and, and you know play kind of the extended plays. Uh, but I, I wouldn't put too much stock into that. I mean, we there's so much time where we're spending apart and on look teams and things. I would say that, you know, our backup quarterbacks do a great job every week of studying, you know, the quarterbacks' um, mechanisms and kind of how they operate and where they like to go with the ball. So shout out to those guys. Mike, uh, Roquan called you uh, a mad scientist yesterday. He said, he puts us in the right spots and lets us kind of be who we are. I can see the look in your face as well. But they all say, we know big things are coming for him in the future. How do you view that and, and what do you bring to a squad if you have to be a head coach? Well, it's 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 uh, it's humbling, it's flattering to hear that. You know, as a coach, you're you're just you're trying to put your guys in spots where they can be successful, and like that's that's the viewpoint. That's what, why we do what we do. You know, when they have success, you have success, and, and that's that's what we're trying to do here. That's why you know all this is here. That's why you guys are here. You know, and um, that's that's what's rewarding to us. So. When you feel when you hear things that your players feel like you're helping them have success, like that, that means a lot. But like I said, I mean, it's it's a it is a team effort, man. There's a lot of information that has to be kind of cultivated and broken down, and then deciphered and then give to them at the same time. My I'm in charge of organizing it and making sure, you know, it it gets them the right way and ultimately making the call on Sundays. But um, to answer your question, yeah, it feels great that we're that we're helping our players have success for sure. Mike, after the uh, Chiefs-Bills game, the, uh, a lot of the X's and O's analysts seemed very excited by what they saw from the Chiefs, the way they would, I guess, make changes to the line of scrimmage to maybe target individual defenders. I mean, do you ex kind of go into your game expecting or preparing for them to do that again, or do you assume you'll see something fairly different from them? Well, uh, the great thing about their offense is they're able they, – they, it looks like they carry a lot of volume, but it's uh, similar concepts packaged differently. Uh, which I think any good scheme is going to do because you, you can't run every play known to mankind all the time. You have to eventually you got to, you know, kind of keep it in your wheelhouse. So they do a great job of hiding what their what their intents are. And uh, obviously, you know, they understand how to attack coverages and stuff. They got they do a great job of scheming up routes and things like that. So we'll see we'll see things that we haven't seen, you know, presented 
early in the snap that you know you're just going to have to play your rules out, and uh, hopefully you know you're in a position to make the play initially after it's snapped, and then if the ball is extended, you know be able to attach the guys and uh, corral the quarterback. We hear getting back to uh, to Roquan, you guys have invested more just as a franchise at that inside linebacker spot. What has that done for the way that you shape this team? That you're kind of like she is a big guy that has a well, I sure I have zero to do with how we invest any 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 penny that goes into the salary cap. Uh, yeah, like I said, we love having great players that can, you know, that play great football and play the way we want to play. So it's our char- it's you know our responsibility as coaches to put them in spots where they can go be successful. And um, you know, given the decisions that we made, like we'll go coach them up and and get them ready to roll. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, you look at the middle of our defense. We got some. I mean, throughout the whole defense, but the middle of our defense, especially. Um, are great players, man, and uh, they deserve a lot of credit for kind of forcing the ball out on the perimeter, which is one of part of our philosophy. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they're just um, fun guys to work with for sure. Just use that phrase, uh, uh, play your rules out, or, or I, f- I forget exactly how you put it, but we, we hear your players say that again and again too. I mean, I think mm-hmm. Queen said it after after the last game. Does it kind of warm your heart to hear them say that? I mean, does it does it sort of show that it's gotten through? Well, it tells me they know what to do, which yeah. is good, uh, you know. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, you know, what do you, you're going to go out, where do you go? Where do you go stand? Where do you look at? You know, when that guy does something, how do you know how to react to it? It's just, those are your rules, you know? And to me, if, if it's clear on what your expectations are and how to do what we expect you to do, then you can go play fast and go play the right way. So, yeah, if they, if they know what their rules are, then uh, that's, that's definitely the first step to be successful. Kansas City played with a lot of 12, 13 personnel against Buffalo. Huh? What kind of, what did they do to put stress on that Bills defense? I guess, how well do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, anytime people are changing personnel on you, you got to make the decision, are we, how are we going to match it with the people that we're going to put on the field? So uh, without giving you the answer of how we're going to do it, um, those are the decisions you have to make. And then, you know, where you're, where the stress is of the calls you're going to make and things like that. So um, and a lot of times, you know, it's going to morph and evolve over the course of the game. After you make a decision, you kind of see how they make their, their decision. You're kind of playing off one another. Um, as the game starts to unfold. So, you know, we have an initial plan on how we're going to play it, and then you know, obviously it'll evolve as, as the game starts to declare itself. Mike, you've had guys step up nicely. I didn't play some more. I don't think this was much time this year, but how valuable, how exciting would it be to uh, get him back? You know, he's back to the this week. And just how versatile he is you know, going back to the team. Well, it'd be great to have Marlon back. And you think about just the season he's had. He's had a lot of adversity, and, you know, he hasn't had a, a – it's been different than his experiences of the years past. So, um, you know, if he is ready to come back, man, it'd be awesome just to see him and be back and feel like he can, you know, tri- you know, contribute physically on game day. But Mike, y'all have had success with the cornerback blitz a couple times a game without giving away too much of it. How do you decide when to run that? Is it a high risk, high reward play? Can you share share much about the cornerback blitz? Yeah, sure. I, I've spoken to our our kind of pressure philosophy in the past. Uh, you know, it's a it's a team rush mentality. So. Uh, even when we're rushing four, you know, we want the illusion of pressure a lot of times and just to have the threat of blitzing off one side, blitzing off on the other side, coming up the middle, double edge or bluffing out of there. I mean, th- we want that threat to be at all times. So in order to have that threat, you have to do it. And, uh, you know, so guys aren't just calling your bluff all the time. Do one more for Mike. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's sad. Uh, um, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Um, Looking at the film for you guys, um, obviously the tight ends are just a huge part of how the mechanical offense is to see Brokon, PQ, Kyle kind of get to the depths that make it difficult to, to waste those passes in that kind of intermediate part of the field. Mm-hmm. How do you need the skills at, and uh, I guess what, how important could that be to gain with the tight end that trying to score? Don't you ask him about the tight end or how we put like, the linebacker? Wait a few guys. Well, yeah, I mean, um, you're, you're trying not to show your intentions uh, until, the, until the ball is snapped. So, again, go back to rules and how we want guys to play things. It's just playing disciplined football, understand, you know, where your kind of 111 fits in the whole, the whole puzzle, and then trusting that the guys around you are going to do it. And then I think what you see on tape and over the course of time, if you keep doing it right, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to find the right spots to, you know, matriculate the ball down the field, and that's the whole idea. All right, thanks, Mike. Okay.